in this third episode we are going to suppose that the current situation in Catalonia is at its worst. The independentists have become extremely violent, not only against the police but also against the Catalans who feel Spanish. Assuming that there was a climate of civil war in Catalonia and that the army was forced to intervene, how would it be the liberation or invasion of Catalonia and how many troops can the Spanish army deploy? In this fictitious scenario, we will analyze both the radical independentist forces as well as the troops that would engage them from the Spanish army and civil guard. And in the end, we will simulate in a strategic map a battle from both sides in order to decide who is victorious. As for the rules of this war scenario, we are going to assume that the separatists are arming themselves, generating riots and killing people in the streets, making the intervention of the army necessary. Finally, we will only take into account the forces within the peninsula of Spain, for reasons that I will explain further in the video. As we discussed in previous episodes, the Catalan population is very divided by almost 50-50. As we have already discussed a lot about this issue, I will quickly say that the secessionist forces will be composed of 8,000 Catalan police, being this half of the total force, and 30,000 militia extremists, which are the amount of votes that the most radical party of the independentists got in the previous elections. This militia will be armed with guns, shotguns, knives and clubs, and they will be use them to kill their political opponents. We will also assume that there will be a force of about 100,000 people rioting, looting and burning whatever they find in the path. Nevertheless, the real force that the Spanish army has to defeat will be composed of 38,000 rebels. The Spanish army is composed of around 80,000 soldiers and is very well equipped in both technology and weapons. This is the Spanish army battle order. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but because you're watching this video, I already summarized it and studied it for you. Basically, what you guys need to know is that the Spanish army is divided into eight general commands, of which three in green have an offensive nature, four in orange a defensive nature, and one is logistics. This is very easy to see if we put it in a map. If we go from top to bottom, we can see that the logistics of the army is based in an Atlantic port. The San Marcial division, which includes a large part of the armored units, has its bases in the center north. The support units are scattered through the center. And the Castillejos division, composed entirely by infantry, is in the center south. And then, in orange, we have the defensive units in the Balearic and Canary Islands, as well as the African cities of Ceuta and Melilla. In this scenario we will only take into account the attack units since none of the territories outside the peninsula would be left unguarded. So let's analyze the attack divisions. I have add pictures below the names so you can follow the general idea of how the division is composed. First let's start with the San Marcial division which as you can see it has tanks. It is composed by 15,000 soldiers, or 8 infantry regiments if you are into military lingo. In addition to 330 Leopard 2 tanks, which is one of the best tanks in the world, it also has 250 Pizarro infantry fighting vehicles, picture to the right, as 1,000 APCs, mostly M113s, and 500 fighting vehicles, mostly Humvees. In addition, this division has its own regiment of field artillery and engineers. The next division is called Castillejos and it's a heavy infantry division. And why do I call it heavy infantry division? Well, because it incorporates the best infantry units of the Spanish army. With around 10,000 soldiers, it has about 1,000 APCs and 500 other uh, Humvees. Within this division, we have a brigade of the foreign Spanish legion, as well as a paratrooper legion brigade and a light mechanized brigade, with their corresponding field artillery regiment and engineers. And these are very high quality troops, not because of their training, but as well as their combat experience, armament and mobility. Finally, the support units, if united, could be a division by themselves, although they are not. The mission is to reinforce other divisions. 
Among the support forces, there are Tiger Combat Helicopters, Transport Helicopters, Special Operations Units, Anti-Aircraft Units, and reinforcements of artillery and engineers. I'll leave you here the strength of all divisions in case you want to stop the video and check them out. The Civil Guard is a military police that will have a key role in this scenario, since it has two fundamental missions that I have found analyzing their strength. Here you have their battle order with the different units within the police. As you can see, they are very divided and you cannot use all agents for battle, since I do not see the traffic police or the customs service entering combat. The Civil Guard has 81,000 agents, more units than the army, and although not everyone can fight, its availability as a policeman and military man is very interesting since the army land units can be reinforced by units of the police, with the right to detain and imprison civilians, which make them very operative in a scenario like this. Assuming that one fourth of the agents could go into combat and the rest remains in Spain doing their job, that leaves us with a total force of 20,000 military police strengthening the army divisions. Now we are going to compare the different forces that will fight in Catalonia. To put these numbers into context, we assume that the Spanish units are composed of 25,000 soldiers of the army, 20,000 civil guards, 8,000 Catalonian police, making a total of 53,000 soldiers. On the other side, the separatists have 8,000 police rebels and 30,000 militia, making a total of 38,000 soldiers. The attack rule 3 to 1 is not fulfilled in this scenario, but also keep in mind that the army has tanks, armored vehicles, combat helicopters, etc, 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 that are a force multiplier. The first three days of the war would start with violence and dead people in the street, forcing the Spanish central government to establish martial law. On the morning of the third day, Catalonia would have a tactical situation similar to this one. Girona and Jada are cradles of the independentist movement, and we will suppose that the Spanish forces there would have to retreat or be annihilated. Barcelona instead has more population in favor of the state, and the police there would control the situation. This is not the case of Tarragona, where the population is divided 50-50, and it would be there where we would see more violence, since both sides would try to destroy each other. During the evening of the third day, the armored units of the San Marcial Division would take positions around Lleida, reinforced by units of the Civil Guard. During the morning of the fourth day, we would see the first engagements between army-recognized units and a coalition of rebel Catalonian police and militiamen. In the afternoon of the fourth day, the first flags of the Legion incorporated in the Castillejos Division would arrive at Tarragona. During the fifth day, the soldiers of the Legion and the Civil Guard would pacify Tarragona, imposing their superior firepower on the independentists. The sixth day would begin with the armored division surrounding Lleida, with the Civil Guard taking control of the roads and highways. Meanwhile, the infantry division would stay between Tarragona and Barcelona, helping the Civil Guard with the remaining pockets of resistance. At the end of the sixth day, we would see independentist units outside Lleida's battlefield moving back towards Girona. On the seventh day, the armored division would try to assault Lleida with a large-scale offensive. Meanwhile, the infantry division and the civil guard would march towards Girona, the last stronghold of the independentists. At this point in the conflict, the Spanish Royal Navy would appear, deploying a force of 5,000 marines to the north of Girona, blocking the frontier with France. Day 8 would be the bloodiest, since all army forces would try to make a total attack on the independentist defenses, sieging or destroying them. After this attack, the fighting would continue into the second week on the remaining pockets of resistance, mostly on the countryside. Surely, on the twelfth day, we would see the unconditional surrender of the rest of the independentist units and the total control of the army and the civil guard over Catalonia. 
After that, the army would spend six months to a year in Catalonia resolving a possible guerrilla war. At the end of the first year, only one of the divisions would remain, in case there were any rebel problems. This division would return home at the end of the year and new units will replace them every year, until the government thinks it's safe to withdraw the army from Catalonia. And finally, to summarize, because the Spaniards are not going into full enemy territory, they have a well-equipped and professional army, police units to back them up, and international support, I believe that Spain will win this war. And well, here you have it, ladies and gents. I'm sorry it took so long to make this episode, but stay tuned, because the next one is going to be about the possible Korean War. As always, like and subscribe if you like the, the episode. Leave a comment if you want to discuss with me if I got something wrong. And if you want to watch this video in Spanish, go to my other channel. And well, I hope I'll see you all in the next episode of Who Would Win the Next War. See ya.